So, uh, question four will always be which of sources, and it's usually E and F, is more useful to the historian who is investigating or whatever it is they're investigating. And the key word in this question is useful, all right? You are a historian investigating something. Which one would you use to uh, write your great book about this thing? Now, the examiners are looking to see if you uh, are judging how useful it is based on the content of the source and who is writing it and why. So it's best when you're planning your answer to think, right, in source E, what is it in the content that is useful? And what is it in the provenance? That's the technical name, isn't it, for who wrote it and why? In source E and in source F. And then you need to write a conclusion where you are deciding if it is source E that is most useful or source F and make a choice. It's either source E or source F. It's not, oh, it could be one, could be the other, I'm not too sure. But you make a choice. So let's have a look at source E, which is from the diary of Oswald Robertson on the 30th of November 1917. He was an army surgeon working on the Western Front during the First World War. Well, this looks incredibly useful, doesn't it? Because he was there for real, really. And so he was really doing blood transfusion, so this is going to be really useful, isn't it? Let's have a look what he says. Men were horribly mutilated, many were dying when brought into the ward. The beds were filled and we began putting stretchers on the floor. Blood everywhere, clothes soaked in blood, pools of blood in the stretchers, streams of blood dropping from the stretchers to the floor. My rubber apron was one solid red smear. All we could do was try to stop the bleeding and get the patients as comfortable as possible. I could only transfuse an occasional patient. The majority had to take their chance and go through the operation as best they could. Oh. Well, it tells us that um, only the occasional patient could be transfused, doesn't it? And it sort of tells us that there was a need for transfusion, but it's not full of details, is it? Let's have a look at source F. From a brief history of blood transfusion, an article published in 2005 in a scientific journal, The Biomedical Scientist. Now, do not, under any circumstances, go, oh, look, it's 2005, it's a secondary source. They weren't there. What do they know? Because that's nonsense, is it? This is published in a scientific journal, so it's clearly by somebody who's done a lot of research into this topic. Okay, so that means that this provenance is very good. If it said the sun, we might question it, but this is a scientific journal. And he says, the use of blood transfusion advanced with the outbreak of the First World War. This was mainly due to the new knowledge of matching different blood groups and the use of sodium citrate to stop blood clotting. Sodium citrate allowed blood to be stored for the use of joint transfusions. Before this, transfusion was only possible using specifically treated blood and by direct person-to-person -person techniques. Well, it tells us a lot, doesn't it? It tells us about the uh, development of different blood groups, doesn't it? And it tells us about um, sodium citrate. Clearly, I'm not writing very well today, so I'll just put SC there. So it does tell us a lot about blood transfusions during the First World War. So my overall answer will probably look something like this. Source C is very useful to a historian investigating blood transfusions during the First World War because Oswald Robertson was a doctor on the Western Front in the First World War and so experienced blood transfusions firsthand. However, unfortunately, he doesn't tell us a great deal about blood transfusions. He describes the need for it as there was blood dropping everywhere. But, and he also tells us that he could only transfuse the occasional patient, but he doesn't tell us why this was the case. Source F is incredibly useful as it was published in a scientific journal and the person writing it had obviously done lots of research. He tells us about the different blood groups uh, were developed and tells us about how sodium citrate was used to split up the, uh, it was helped transport blood. So, in all, it is clearly source F that is most useful as it has far better content than source E.